on to the next one, and it's from Duncan Putt, please, or Duncan Putt. Are you Putt or Putt? Oh, uh, Putt. Putt. Um, what, okay. what consequences will the Brexit have for the UK? What consequences would a British exit from the EU have for the UK? Um, Declan Kearney. I think it'll be very negative. Uh, I think it's a, a case, as the Irish saying would go, of you cutting off your nose to spite your face. But my particular concern would be for the implications that uh, a decision to go for Brexit would have for the north of Ireland. I think it would have profound implications for uh, uh, economic growth, prosperity here in the north. Uh, we would see an end to the, the type of European funding that has been so essential to community economic regeneration here in the north in relation to infrastructural development. Our farming community is highly dependent upon uh, cap payments and our fisheries industry is, is increasingly dependent upon assistance from uh, Europe. But in addition to that, I think it would represent a huge setback for the political process itself because the decision to, to see Brexit will inevitably harden partition. It will thwart cross-border cooperation. And in that sense, it is a huge negative for, uh, for all citizens here, for the business and employers, constituency within our society, for the farming community and for workers. Because while I view the European Union as, as an institution with, with huge imperfections, which requires enormous democratisation, and Sinn Féin's emphasis would be on seeing the increasing primacy of a social Europe. Nevertheless, it, it is an arena which is essential for ensuring that regulations and directives are brought forward which entrench human rights, democratic rights, that are, are essential to economic growth and prosperity. And, uh, and, and in the case of our own state here in the north of Ireland, has played a hugely important and influential role in the development of the peace process. OK. Do you agree with all that, <laughs> Theresa Villas? Well, I agree with the, what the Prime Minister has said in the past, and I think he reiterated it today, that, of course, the UK could be a success outside the European Union. The question is, are we better off outside or inside the European Union? And that will really depend on the outcome of the very important negotiations that the Prime Minister is conducting at the moment and we'll hope will culminate in February. This is a crucial question and I'm proud of the fact that it's a Conservative government that, that are giving the people of the United Kingdom the choice to vote on our relationship with Europe. Have it's you decided choice. how you'll vote? Uh, we're, we all need to wait <laughs> for the outcome, of the, uh, the outcome of the negotiation. That is going to be crucial. It depends whether the other member states of the European Union listen to the reasonable arguments that the Prime Minister is putting to them about the, the huge need for change in the European so, Union. So staying on in, on in on the terms we are at the moment, as Chris Grayling said, would be a disaster in your view also, would it? Well, I, if nothing is brought back, you'd be voting get out. Well, certainly no one is happy with the status quo. The Prime Minister isn't, the government isn't. And, and frankly, I, I think you know, there are many people across this country who would agree that the European Union needs to change. It needs to become more competitive. It needs to be fairer to countries. All right, well, well we don't know what's going to, what he's going to come back with, if anything. But if he comes back with nothing, you'd be voting to leave. Well, the government will obviously take a and view you, on... You, you, <laughs> We need to wait and see what the outcome of the negotiation is. And then the reality is that every man and woman in this country has the choice. It doesn't really matter what, you know, members of the government think. The choice well, is going to be voice vested. it what the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland the... thinks, doesn't it? When, when think you've the... had this case made by Sinn Féin, how vital it is for Northern Ireland to stay in. I think the it matters what you think. The important thing is that the people of this country are going to get the right to vote in a referendum yeah, well, on our that. relationship right. with Europe. Do you accept, P Theresa, that the interests of the people in the north of Ireland are better served by staying in Europe or not? Well, as I say, we need to await the outcome of the right. negotiation. Yeah. Okay. But the reality is, you know, the, the position of Northern Ireland is something, of course, which will, people will, should and will, I'm sure, reflect on in choosing the which right. way they vote. The, the, the woman there with the hand up, yes. It's you. It's um, got the microphone over your head. <laughs> um, well, as a student, I'm, I, I'm not... I can't vote. He said every, woman, every person will have the right to vote. I'm only 17, and if the vote happens before my 18th birthday, I will not have a say in that, and I do not think that is right at all. What would your say be if you did have it? If you, if you, I would vote to stay. You'd vote to stay. And, and, and you said that. Uh, in, yes. 
Uh, I object strongly to a bunch of unelected bureaucrats sitting in Brussels telling me what I can do, <laughs> telling me what I can do in my own country. I believe the EU needs us a lot more than we need them. We have gone on our own before. We can do so again. And, 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 and would, you, would your vote change depending on what David Cameron brought back from Europe or not? Uh, David Cameron would need to bring a great deal back for me to become convinced that we are better off in Europe. What, what would he have to bring back? Well, he would have to come back having changed human rights legislation, European courts, uh, the amount of contributions that we put into Europe every year. I firmly believe a lot of that money would be better spent uh, stimulating growth in our own country. So, uh, 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 right. Uh, so, so, sounds like Brexit for you. Uh, Peter Hayne, well, do you want to answer his point? Perhaps? Yes, absolutely. I'd be keen to do so. First of all, there's an elected European Parliament. Northern Ireland sends European MPs. It's very powerful. It's not a question of unelected bureaucrats uh, sitting in Brussels. They have significant influence. We, we have a commissioner uh, in Brussels as well. British commissioner, very significant influence. As a government, we have a veto in the European Council on a whole series of issues. So I'm afraid you're just factually wrong. But can I just express astonishment that Theresa, Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, doesn't have a view on whether Northern Ireland would be better off or outside the European Union? I mean, maybe, What if... Uh, I think... I think, more, I think Britain leaving, North, leaving Europe would have very serious implications for the peace process. Borders would have to go up between the two parts of the island of Ireland, which are now in a happier state than we've been seen for centuries. I also think it would be catastrophic for Britain. You said that they need us more than we need them. Half our trade is with the European Union. Only 10% of their trade is with us. Jobs, investment, prosperities, vital uh, to keep us within Europe. Right, do you want to come back on the point? No? OK. You stay here. Yes, you, in the, on, the, on the gangway here. In, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, Mr. Yeah, you. Um, we've already heard Declan and now Peter come up with the standard scare tactics used for us to encourage us to stay in Europe. They've told us that we have to... We rely on the money and that we rely on it for jobs. But... With most of the figures show that's not true, and frankly saying, as Declan did, that we, um, we, we need all the money from Europe to keep Northern Ireland going, because we don't risk what might happen otherwise, is a bit like staying, I should say, on the dole, as opposed to risk getting a job. Well, here's a question for Theresa. In the event of a Brexit, and in the event that the European funding that we have become so dependent upon in order to keep the Northern regional economy afloat, Will this Tory government commit to ensuring that that funding will be replaced and that there be an additional increment to our block grant to replace the European funding that we would lose in the All event right. of a you Brexit? You made the question. Do you want to answer briefly? I, th I think these are matters which need to be debated during a referendum. The um, answer is yes you know, or no. Clearly, clearly you know, in the event of a Brexit, there will be a debate about what would be substituted for um, current European funding programmes. But you these think... are matters for debate in a referendum so people can make up their minds do, do one Do you think the there'd be a problem? You say it, it's, it's, uh, you, it, it's silly to say we've got... It's like being on the dole or something. Do you think there'd be a problem for Northern Ireland if, if, it was, uh, if the UK voted out? No, I think it would be a positive thing, both for Northern Ireland... Actually positive. ..and for the rest of the UK. It would bring us... Um, it would bring us increased prosperity and um, it would actually give us a right over our own border. And Peter says that we'd have to put up border controls. There were never border controls before we joined the European Union with the Irish Republic and it's not going to change if we okay. leave. Nigel Dodds, Dodds, where do you... Nigel Dodds. Very briefly, but I'll take the other point. Let very briefly, we have lots of refugees coming in. We'd have to have border controls. Nigel Dodds. Well, we have a common travel area between the Irish Republic and the rest of the UK. What about the main point he said? The main point is this. There's a lot of scaremongering will go on. We've heard that David Cameron's going to run a project fear, scare people. Mm -hmm. And this business about the differences between Northern Ireland and the Republic and border controls and all that, well, we've heard this all before. We heard it very, very recently when the argument was we should all join the euro. 
Do you remember that? We were all told it'll be terrible if the UK is not in the euro and the Republic joins the euro. Remember we had a currency equivalence between Northern Ireland and the Republic for decades. And we were told this would be disastrous for trade, for business. What happened? Nothing happened. The reality is that Northern Ireland and the UK can survive quite well, and many would argue better, outside the EU. The crucial fact is this. In terms of grants and all the rest of it, the UK has paid to Europe since 1973 £450 billion. Pounds. Each year we pay in £19 billion and get back £10 billion, a deficit of £9 billion. Pounds. Northern Ireland, to pick up on Declan's point, for every pound we get out of Europe, we pay in £1.50. This idea that all this money comes as large as is given to us. It's our own money coming back at a reduced rate. And that's what needs to be addressed. So, as a so matter of form, fact, will you vote as out, things, or as, will you vote to as stay As things in? stand, I would certainly be voting to come out. I have to see David Cameron coming back from his negotiations <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a very, very clear message that we're going to restore the sovereignty of the United Kingdom's Parliament, that we're going to restore control over our borders, and we're going to address the situation where £350 million every week is transferred from British Exchequer, which could build hospitals, help our health waiting lists, right. create jobs, in reality, help the environment, in reality, and sent to Brussels. In reality, do you expect to get that? Do you expect well, to get that? In I reality. Think, I think, if that's your view, you'll be voting well, the, out, the, because yes, none of that seems to be yes, on the agenda. Well, I think that David Cameron has set the bar very, very low, in my opinion. One of his own MPs stood up in Parliament and described it as very thin gruel. I think he needs to step up the game, because he has a lot of leverage. The European Union does need the United Kingdom. The trade deficit is in the European Union's uh, benefit. They, they have, there's a £60 billion <coughs> trade deficit. So, in other words, they need the United Kingdom's business far more than we need their right. business. You, you That's said the reality the of it. You said. Uh, I think following up on what Nigel and Declan have both said, it doesn't make much difference financially or economically whether we're in or out. What I would like to see is a change of Brussels interfering with our uh, legal systems and our human rights, mm. as, as Nigel has talked about. And if we don't get some change in that area, then I would like to see us bailing right. out. Ronnie Glass. I just think, considering what we, the first topic that we talked about today, how you know dangerous Putin is. I think that's more evidence of anything that we need to work together. That to me is an example of why Europe is so important. That we're stronger when Europe works together. Now I know I think I'm on the minority on the panel here, but um, I I really like Europe. I like the idea of Europe. I I think it was. I think it's because. Growing up in Ireland in the 90s, it seemed like really big and really glamorous. And I think I associate with the Eurovision. But <laughs> I see, personally, I view Europe as like a sort of left-wing House of Lords. So whenever the sort of Tory government brings in some crazy new plan, like, oh, we're scrapping pedestrian crossings, it's slowing business down, we can kind of look to Angela Merkel and she'll go, it's fine. So, Hello. She's I think, <laughs> no, but I think, I think, to use an analogy, right, we're better off, Britain is better off being the bad boy of Europe than leaving. We're better off being Zayn Malik in one direction <laughs> than being Zayn Malik solo crew. Uh, OK. <laughs> I tell you, um, <laughs> I, uh, once, we, once, once, we get, once we get close to the referendum, I won't be allowed to do this, but just a matter of interest. Hands up those of you who, at the moment, would vote out. And who'd vote in. Yeah, slight... Yeah. Yeah, about double the number staying in. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, shall we go on to another question? I think we're better. Uh, 